Hi everyone, if you're new here, a big welcome. If you've been here before, a big welcome back. And as always, thank you for your support. Today on MK Blueprints, I have another quick tutorial for you that will hopefully help elevate your fantasy map creations and speed up your workflow. If you've read the title, you already know what it is. So let's have a look at the before and after of this map. As you can see, there are some shorelines on the edges on the left and right. And as I switch it off, well, it doesn't look the same, does it? The version without the shorelines does look as if it lacks that little wow factor. When I try to add a different texture behind it, it looks a bit too much on the other hand. And the names of the seas and the map itself look cramped. The shoreline brush is a quick and easy way to embellish your work and highlight line work details. And as always, it can be reused over and over again. It takes just minutes to create, but I would recommend adding it to the arsenal of brushes you have. We will start with the 1000 pixel square canvas. As for the brush, we will use something that is representative of our usual brush texture when we create our artwork. So if you're using very inky clean lines, use a studio pen brush for example. If you're using more of a pencil looking lines, a dry ink brush might be a better option for you. This is what I'm using. The details will now be very eye-catching once executed on the final piece, but if you match your brush strokes ahead of time, you're going to reduce the chances of those elements looking out of place. We're going to turn on drawing guides in the canvas menu, and you can adjust it to your liking, but I will change mine to 100 pixels. Press done when you're happy with the look of it. You can adjust the grid size on the bottom of the menu. Press done when you're happy with the look of it. Now all you have to do is to draw some squiggly lines going across the canvas like so. Avoid going too close to the edges on the left and the right and skip the top and the bottom parts of the canvas for now. This is the same process I use to create many other seamless brushes and patterns, so if you're curious about them I will link them in the top right corner. Now that I'm happy with how it looks I'm going to add two background layers and fill them with the color white. Then I will duplicate the line layer so I have two of each. Now select one line and one background layer, ensure the snapping on the bottom of the menu is on and drag both layers to the right. Ensure that the middle of the layers that you're dragging are aligned with the right edge of the canvas itself. You should see like a thin orange line to indicate that you bang on in the middle. Now select the other background layer and line layer and drag them both to the left. Ensure they are perfectly aligned on the edge as well. Now you can merge both line layers and both background layers and continue filling the middle. Connect each line to your liking. If you're not happy with how the lines align with each other, you can always erase part of them and redraw them again. I had to do it for a couple of them, as you can see here. Once you're happy with the result, we will duplicate the background and line work layer again, but this time we will be dragging them up and down. When done, you can merge both line work and background layers and continue creating more lines to ensure they look parallel to each other and evenly spaced. Now we're going to move the layers to right and left for the last time to align the shore lines. Thank you. 
switch the visibility off the background layers and turn on alpha lock on the line work layer. I do this to avoid problems when creating my brushes in the edit menu. With the alpha lock on, I am choosing a round brush and maxing out its size. Then I change the color to white and paint over the pattern. With alpha lock, only the previously drawn lines will be covered. When all is done, I am exporting it to my gallery as a PNG to preserve the transparency of the background. Now let's create the brush itself. To do so, we're going to duplicate one of the existing brushes on Procreate. Go to Textures and choose Grid. Swipe left and click on Duplicate, then click on the duplicated brush to access the setting menu. In Grain, we will change it to our squiggly lines instead of the grid. Click on Edit, Import and Import from Photo. Find your exported PNG image and press Done once it's imported. Now we are also going to change the grain behavior to texturize. This is to ensure the pattern of the lines continues when we lift our pencil up from the canvas without overlapping. On the Apple Pencil menu we will change flow to zero. This ensures that the opacity of our brush is not dependent on the pressure with which we draw. Unless of course you want to keep it on, but I like my lines to be consistent since I mainly do line art. Now we're going to the shape menu and you see how that circle fades away on the edges? This will create a slight fading of our squiggly lines when drawing them. If you don't want that, simply go to Edit, Import and this time choose Source Library. Here you can see all available shapes. I would suggest going for either a hard circle or an oval. This will ensure that each of our squiggly lines are finished with the same opacity and there is no fading at the ends. I personally like the effect so I'm going to keep it like that but there's an option for you if you want to change it. The last thing we need to do is test our brush to see if the size needs adjusting. If the lines are too big or too small, you can go back into the grain settings and change the scale to make it smaller or larger, like so. And that's it! I told you it will be quick and easy. Now you can apply this brush to any of your maps or other artwork as you see fit. I have many more tutorials in my playlist so go check them out and as always if you have any questions pop them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.